I've never really gotten used to uh, being a famous person. I'm devoted to work, you know. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm obsessed by, by workings, and I don't understand the whole trappings of success, you know, the stardom aspect of it. Uh, I don't, I've never come to grips with the distortions of the truth, you know, with people looking for the negative and looking to twist the reality into something it's not, about me especially. I don't understand it. Is it, I mean, to use a cliché, is that paying the price of fame? success or fame? Probably. Do people want to pull because, you down? Because, because, see, I don't like being envied. I really don't like being envied because um, I have my own pain, you know, and, and uh, but, but to most people I'm, I'm the object of, of envy. You're surprised that you've achieved most of the targets or a large portion of the targets that you were aiming at. Do you ever sort of, in the privacy of your home, say, I don't believe it, I've done it? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm constantly in, in a state of wonder. Mm. You know, every time I, <laughs> I go on the Warner's jet, I think, wow, like I'm flying in this private jet. You know, because I'm a movie star, I guess. You know, when I mean, you're in, I, I'm always, I always think it's great. When you're in the stretch limo, do you sometimes think, well, I should be used to this by now, but hey, this is great. It. I am not used to it. I still think it's funny, you know, like I get a kick out of it. <laughs> How do you relax o away from it all? I mean, what's your form of relaxation? Do you swim up and down or read a lot, play tennis? I like to read. I, I, I'm trying to learn to have more fun. You know, I've always been afraid. My mother was always a person who instilled a great deal of fear in me. You don't ride horses, you don't ski, you don't go in the water, you don't dance ballet, you'll break your toes. So I'm fighting that, you know, I'm fighting my conditioning because these things are fun. You know, the, the gate opens and there's a busload of people like <laughs> looking at you, you know, and I have to duck all the time, I'm always ducking. You know, because I get embarrassed. I mean, I do like privacy, you know, and, and that, that is, again, another price of fame. But it sounds odd to complain about it, because most people are so much less fortunate than I am, you know, that my, my problems in that area uh, will not get any pity. So do you ever, that's okay. No pity. Do you ever have a dream then, Barbara, that, that, that you can change identity miraculously, just for a week maybe, oh, yeah, and I'd walk around? I'd love to be anonymous and look in store windows, you know, and... I mean, I can't go on vacation certain places. You know, one, one weekend I went to Marbella, and it was absolutely impossible. All I wanted to do is go at night to the restaurants, and they have shops open at night till, like, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. It was a dream. And these paparazzi were following us, and it made it completely impossible to enjoy the place. Yeah. And, and we had to leave. So and I'm swinging my bag with the photographers, you know. <laughs> it was just awful. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you cope... Uh, also, you, you're viewed as an object, as a thing, without right. feelings. Like when I was in Rome one time, I said to the paparazzi, look, I'll pose for you for pictures. Then will you please leave me alone? I, I want to go on the streets and look around. And the man didn't even answer me. It was like I didn't exist. It was like I wasn't a person, had no feelings. I was a thing, an object, a picture for sale. But when you were a, a, a young kid growing up in Brooklyn and mm -hmm. pushing your way through the clubs and determined to prove your talent, you surely must have known that there was a price to be paid for the fame oh, no. that you wanted. Oh, no. I didn't, didn't you know? No. I just did the work. I just sang my songs. I did my parts. I didn't know all this stuff had to go with it. You know, I was eating in a restaurant in London, and somebody called the photographers again. And I had just walked to the restaurant from my house in London. And uh, I couldn't believe this one. I came out the door. And as I was getting in the cab, the door was locked. The doors were locked. They had paid off the taxi cab driver to lock the doors. So I couldn't even get in the cab while they were taking my pictures, you know? Some of the stories are so bad that when I actually read them, I called up laughing. One story that you walked in a room, I think, and sacked everybody who was on the left-hand side of the room. Now, how come you said that? Did you know that I used that today as an example? No, I, I thought, have no idea. I said it's one of the most ludicrous stories I've ever heard. It's a great story, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it great? Like, who do they... You see, they have... What is, who is they? I don't even know if, I don't even think it's the public. I think it's the press, you know, trying to create sensationalism in journalism. And, and it's like creating this person who is la diva, you know, la streisand, uh, the power monger, mogul, lady, uh, man eater. I don't know what, you know, give me all those names. It's like this powerful woman devours people. 
You know, she walks into a room and goes, everyone on the left is fired. I love it. Love Why not the did. right? Why not the back? You know, I mean, it's so, <laughs> it's so unbelievable. Yeah. We don't operate that way. People who are in positions of power, people who are at all truly talented or professional, we, it's crazy. I wish people, I pray to God people don't believe stories like that. And yet if you had a, a, a great advisor, maybe that advisor would have said to you, for instance, when you made Yentl, maybe you shouldn't have been so prominent in all the credits and so on, because that might feed the image that you are all dominant and all yeah, powerful. Yeah, but you know something? It's the truth. Should I not put a credit that I co-wrote the screenplay? I'm proud of what I did. And should I not say I produced the movie? Should I not say I directed the movie? Should I not even put my name as the star? I shouldn't say I sang in it. I shouldn't say, I, well, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, I go it. through it. I say, yeah, my friends say, you know, you're not going to be liked if you say that. I said, but who did it? I mean, here's a woman who uh, is, is being labeled nuts. And she's fighting the system and fighting her parents and fighting the doctors and everyone who wants to put her away, you know, a completely misunderstood character. Do you actually live the part at all? I know that you actually visited one or two mental institutions, didn't you? And yeah, several. Yeah, I'd say you visited several. What was your findings there? That the doctors were crazier than the patients. Are you being serious? I swear to you. I mean, I went to this one mental hospital. The doctors don't wear white coats, so they, you know, so they look like the patients. <laughs> and this guy was dressed real funny in a baseball cap and a funny big rodeo belt. And when, when somebody asked for a chair, like, could we have another chair to sit and talk to this patient, he turned on the nurse and yelled at her in this crazy way, don't you interfere with him. And it was absolutely paranoid, nutsy poo. The film's called Nuts, but do you believe the real nuts are the people running the planet? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. People who are destroying the ozone layer, people who are shooting at each other on highways, and a lot of crazy people out there. They're not locked up. If you could construct for yourself, um, uh, a year in sort of earthly paradise. Is there, do you have any form of an ideal future or an ideal way to exist? Well, I think the most important thing is to achieve inner peace, inner harmony, you know, to come to grips, to have compassion for all those who misunderstand you, to um, probably be surrounded by children and um, continue to grow my vegetables without pesticides. I like, I like to grow things, yeah, I like to, and give things back to the earth. I, I have a compost heap, which gives me a great pleasure, you know? You sit there and watch it smoking, do you? No, I don't do that, but I love that nothing goes to waste, that every pineapple top and every, you know, old lettuce leaf goes back into the earth as fertile and becomes fertilizer again. Um, I like the balance of nature. I like, I like what is natural. It's interesting, because you like the things that so many millions of people like doing when the behind that front door you mm. like maybe just pottering around the garden i love flowers mm. yeah and trees and that gives you a sense of peace it helps yeah mm. you mentioned the children you've got a child jason mm -hmm. who's what 16 or 17 now 21 21 well i was near wasn't i mm. old cuttings mm -hmm. how do you guide him or do you give him free reign what's your approach to him as a mother well, he's pretty old now, you know? He's a big boy, 21, so I can only give him my advice, but I also know that he has to learn by experience. It's not enough for mommy just to tell him what yeah. is right, you know? Because with your background and your youth, it would be easy for you to lay off completely, wouldn't it, from, from the lessons that you learned from your youth? Oh, no, I try to tell him everything about the lessons, but you still can't do that. You know, children have to learn by themselves. Has he grown up the way you wanted him? Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah, very... Uh, he's a beautiful human being, you know? He's pure. And he tells the truth. My, my first school years, I, I got A in all the scholastic yeah. subjects. But I did get D in conduct. D in conduct. What sort of things do you do? Because I... I remember, you know, being five and six years old in school and, and you're supposed to raise your hand to get your turn to speak. And if the teacher didn't call on me, I just spoke anyway. Yeah. So I got D. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you a happy child or was it, were you, you were a lonely child in one respect, weren't you? Your father was dead and you didn't get on with your stepfather. Yeah, it was bad. It, wasn't, it was bad? It wasn't good. I was always looking for an escape. I think that's why I got interested in the movies. Mm. Because in the movies I could escape my own reality.
but it developed my imagination. I lived a lot in a kind of fantasy life of how, how I could change my life when I got older. What were your fantasies? Well, to become an actress. I wanted to be the people in the movies, though, not necessarily the actors and actresses. I wanted to be, you know, the characters, the characters yeah, who fell in love and got married and were happily, you know, lived happily ever after. Is there, I mean, it's a nasty question, but is there any character even now that you look at and say, now that's what I'd love to be, or that's what I'd love to play even? Well, I've always wanted to play two Cleopatras, her as a child and her as a woman. I've always wanted to play Julia, I guess. It, too old for that now. But Why are you too old for that? But I still feel I could play her. I have a really good concept for her. But are you also described as the actress who sings. Is that the right way around? I think so. So yeah. the singing, in a sense, was a vehicle for you, was mm -hmm. it? Or oh, yeah, because when I started to sing when I was 18, because I couldn't get a job as an actress, you know, I went on stage, and every night I was doing uh, acting exercises. You know what I mean? One, yeah. one song I would do creating a sense memory of a face. The next song I would do a relaxation exercise as an actress. And it worked. But it's extraordinary to see it, to hear you being so matter of fact about singing because your singing of all the, the, the singers that, that I know of is mesmeric to the people who watch it, which indicates acting talent, but indicates mm -hmm. a great passion for singing as well. Well, um, you know, I was given a gift. Aren't you tempted to... to to exploit that gift more by saying, I've had all these reviews, I'm fed up with all the criticism, let's get back out on this stage and sing? No. I mean, I will always be criticized. I've now come to that conclusion. <laughs> what if you sing on stage? But I you don't weren't criticized, were you? Stage. You don't want to? I think I was criticized there too. Oh yeah, I was criticized everywhere. That's okay. Oh, but you didn't sack the audience in those days. Did you, did you not, like most singers, get the maximum buzz from rapport with the audience? Or are you different in that respect? You prefer... I don't, I don't, um, it scares me. I don't, I, I have stage fright. I don't like to be in a group of, uh, I get, it's almost too much love. This strange kind of love. People who think they love me, but they don't know me. Yeah. They know this voice or this image or, it's a strange, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know. The power frightens you, does it? It's just uncomfortable. Mm. Do you, are you a tense person? Do you get very tense yes. before those things? Very, very frightened, yeah. How do you, what do you do to cope with that? I just don't sing in public. <laughs> I'm looking for another place to live, tell you the truth. Mm. Too much smog here. I need clean air. You need clean air? Clean air, yeah. Can we tempt you over to Britain, perhaps? You've heard I about mean, our I, legendary I, rain? I tried to uh, buy a house there once, but I couldn't find anything at the time. Would I'm very look? comfortable there. I must have lived there in a past life. <laughs> what is it you like about Britain? Is, there, is it the pace? Or lack of it? The pace, the manners. I love manners. I really do. I, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm just treated better there, I think, you know? Funny Girl on Stage was a superb time for you in London, wasn't it? You had the most fantastic reviews. You won awards everywhere. What was it like playing to the London audiences? Were they good? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the odd thing was I found out I was pregnant opening night. So I couldn't tell the management, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant. <laughs> And everybody was congratulating me, and I was going, thank you, thank you. Nobody, nobody knew what I was talking about, what I meant, really. But you, I mean, we have this image, don't we, of the British being very reserved, and they don't say anything. Did you find I that? like that reserve. After living in New York, I like that reserve. <laughs> you appreciate it? Yeah, yeah, I do. There was another odd incident. I don't know whether you remember this. You were shooting Len uh, Yentl over there, and... You got, you're getting a very bad press for some reason, all the wrong stories were emerging, and yet the crew one day, do you remember oh, what happened there? So you, nice. you tell the story. That's one of my favorite, oh, that's one of my favorite possessions, is that letter that the crew wrote to the press, and nobody printed it. Trade magazine. Later on, when I was yeah. here, and I, sa I told them about the crew writing this letter to the press, saying, who is this person we read about, and who is this person we know? They're two different people. Yeah. I mean, I was, that was, I carried that letter around with me. And they said that far from being difficult to work with, you were in fact very easy and swap bands with all the crew. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself ever settling down in the sense that life, you take life a bit easier, you take months and months mm -hmm. off? Yeah, I'm doing that now. It's joyous. Not working. Are you lazy? Are you a lazy person, do you think? I'm a combination of someone who's very lazy and very driven. Mm. Yeah, I can easily be either one completely. Yeah. You know? 
Does that explain the, the long gap between yeah. Yentl and Nuts? Was that, was that the explanation oh, for yeah. it? yeah. I just need to recover, you know, re to, need to re-nurture myself, need to observe life again, need to find out what, what excites my passions, you know, what kind of film I want to make. Who would be the actors, say, that you, you know you're going to get an original... I think Marlon Brando is the genius of all time. You know, that was... That. He changed the face of acting. Is there any way that we can drag Brando yeah. back from... Uh, He's what making a movie now in South Africa. Mm. Would you like to work with him? Mm. Be my dream.